Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we're gonna be talking about my top 10 favorite warm toned eyeshadows. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. In this video, I'm going to share, be sharing with you my top 10 favorite warm tones. I've been doing this series since the start of the year where once a month I like to take a certain color family, you could say, and I show you my favorite shades from that color family. I've done purples, I've done blues, I've done taupes, I've done teals. Um, those are some of my favorite shades to wear. Warm tones, not so much, but there are still a couple of really good warm tone shadows in my makeup collection and I want to share them with you today. In case you're new here, then hi, my name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone and this greatly influences how I feel about makeup and why warm tones aren't necessarily my favorite thing to be wearing. I've been reviewing makeup for more than a decade. I love eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice, and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in, then I hope you would like to consider subscribing and joining our little family here. So yes, top 10 favorite warm tones, because even though you know I'm not a warm tone gal, there are warm tones that I do still enjoy wearing from time to time. And this video kind of is a overview of favorite warm tone palettes at the same time, because when I do like a warm tone, I like to hang on to it, and then it does end up in my makeup collection long term. So I've selected a couple of palettes and also a couple of singles that I feel are great warm tones that I personally have in my collection that I really enjoy. And when I think warm tones, these are the ones that come to mind. There is one honorable mention here, the only warm tone palette that I have I'm pretty sure I still have, apart from these ones, uh, that I'm not showing you is the Tartlet Toasted, which I also love. It's one of my favorite all-time warm tone palettes, but that for me is a palette more so than like one particular shade that really stands out. And that's what we're doing in this video. I'm going to be focusing this video on the single one-off shadows from these palettes, swatching them out for you as well so that you can see what these look like. And then you can see when it comes to warm tones, what I'm particularly drawn to. So these are in no particular order. And the first thing I'm grabbing for here is my Moonshot Rêve à Paris little eyeshadow palette. This is one that if you watch my most recent eyeshadow palette declutter, I actually decluttered. But then I bought some more K-Beauty palettes and I was like, you know what? I think I want to do a ranking of a bunch of K-Beauty palettes. And I was like, it would be a shame if this were like physically gone from my home and I could no longer show it in that video. So I finally was able to put that video together in August. And then I just realized after having tried some more K-Beauty eyeshadow palettes, how good this is formula wise. It is just stunning. It's really small and dinky, perfect for travel. You get a pretty decent sized mirror. And then this little guy here. Um, so you have two looks, you could say. And I thought based on the pictures of online that this would be more like cool tone, rosy tones. And then this would be, was the warm, spicy side. Turns out everything in here is warm. So I didn't love it for that reason, because if something is overly warm toned, it can make me look a little bit sickly. And this is sort of like that borderline where it still looks okay on me, but it's not necessarily going to be my favorite. So this little guy though has some really stunning shimmers. So the one I wanna show you is this rose gold shimmer that's right here because that's just one of the standout shades. Both shimmers in here are really, really lovely. The mattes have incre incredibly smooth, creamy formula that is just really easy to blend. So the Moonshot Reva Paris is a really stunning little warm tone palette. And I'm really glad that I didn't like that. I pulled it out of the physical declutter pile before I got rid of all of the product and that I still have this now because I now rate this higher than some of my other K beauty palettes. We have to talk about an original favorite, even though warm tones have never really been my vibe. So much of what's released is warm toned and Zoeva couldn't be left behind. This is one of their chocolate bar palettes. That's the way they live in my brain. They, are, they look like little chocolate wrappers. And this is the Caramel Melange or Caramel, if, depending on how you wanna say it. And this has always been one of my favorite warm toned eyeshadow palettes. And there's one, shade in particular that I really, really enjoy. And it's this bronzy shade here towards the end, that shimmer. It's called Liquid Center. And if you bite into a chocolate caramel, it's that shade. 
and it it's it it oozes out of it. It, it it has that quality when you swatch this you'll see when i swatch it for you in this video how good this is in terms of a shimmer it's just stunning and i don't love orange tones but this is the most orange heavy palette that i actually enjoy like this is super pretty you get this really stunning like lighter gold in here um, these three mattes are really stunning uh, you get enough to blend things out and tone it down just a little bit you get six mattes in here and four shimmers it goes deep enough that you have a bit of a liner or deepening up shade but that liquid center shade it's the it's the reason why this needs to stay in my makeup collection because i love that one single shade maybe at some point in time i may be brave enough to take it out and destroy the palette but i adore my zoeva palettes and i had to share it here and i definitely don't want to get rid of this palette because it's just so gorgeous and really really good quality so this is perhaps one i should put in like a to try a pile at some point in time but the reason why I'm doing warm tones in September is like, this is my warm tone season. Like if I can, with my pale skin, pull off a warm tone, it's late August, early September time. I have a very small window where I feel it looks best. It's sort of like end of summer. I have a little bit of a tan. I don't tan. I try to stay out of the sun as much as I can. Um, but I just feel that in the summertime, just because of the different lighting, um, my hair color gets a little bit brighter, my eyes look a little bit deeper, and I can actually pull off a warm tone then. Um, so the, the window for being able to wear that palette is, palette is fleeting by the minute. Um, but yeah, I do really enjoy that one. I'm trying to mix it up here because I also have some singles, and this is my matte neutral palette. Um, I built this earlier in the year. I reorganized all of my singles into color stories, which made a lot more sense to me than having them by brand, which is what I had before. And I had a blue, green, purple palette, but I had so many other blue, green, purples that I can now have a dedicated blue, a dedicated purple, and a dedicated green singles eyeshadow palette. And then I had so many neutrals, so I decided to split them up into mattes, satin shimmers, and metallic shimmers. And it's been working lovely. It worked. It's very satisfying to my brain to look at these now. And this is the matte palette that I built. And as you can see, it's all very neutral to cool. <laughs> Save for this guy, it's Chickadee from Makeup Geek. I know you can no longer buy it. But if there is a warm tone that I enjoy, it's a mustard yellow. And Chickadee by Makeup Geek, is one of my original first of the mill single shadows I ever bought because Makeup Geek is where I got started, I think. Um, and Chickadee is one of their like so standard shades that everybody was raving about, so I bought it, but a lot of those Makeup Geek shadows were very warm toned and I didn't end up really getting the use out of it, but there's going to be another Makeup Geek shadow in today's overview um, because some of those warm tones I've kept around because they are so good and Chickadee is no exception. It's perhaps a bit more yellow than mustard, I would feel. Um, there's definitely better mustard yellows I have now, but in terms of like a single that I've never decluttered, as much of the warm tones that I've actually gotten rid of as part of my singles collection, that's a warm tone I've had to have my hands on and I have to keep my hands on it for as long as it's still good to go. More palettes, another favorite warm tone palette. I don't know if this is still available, but it's the Saharan by Juvia's Place. And Juvia's Place is another place that does really good warm tones. And so that, that's where this purchase came in. It is not the original color story though, because I took this shade out and took a shade from the Afrique and put it in here. Um, this used to be some sort of like peachy shade and it was the only shade in the palette that I didn't like. It's super orange heavy, but you also get your cranberries, your golds. This antique golden here is stunning. Um, I love that you get a pop of something to contrast it with, with this like green tone, grayy sort of shade down here. But it's got light enough shades that with my fair skin, I can do a very neutral look. So where a lot of warm tone palettes end up always looking very glam on me, and I ended up decluttering those over time, this one never did because I can like do something like this and it's fine. Use the black as liner and I have a perfect everyday look. 
So for me, having that cranberry in here just made a lot of sense. You get a, like a more pink tone cranberry in here. So I feel that for a warm tone palette, this was never overly warm, even though it does have that spicy quality. So if you can get this, still get this, I think it's still a really good warm tone palette. More single shadows, more makeup geek. I have them in this palette. This is sort of like overflow of stuff where I just didn't really feel it went with anything else in the palettes already. And I could nicely fill them up here. Um, I've got some Terra Moons in here. I think these are ColourPop. Got some Glam Shop in here. Um, but this guy right here, so this is why I say it didn't really go because it's got a lot of the warm tone shimmers that didn't fit into the other palette anymore. But this is Makeup Geek's Flamethrower. The name in itself is already stunning. And I remember being influenced by Nikki Tutorials to buy it because she, I think she got them early and she showed it in a video at the time. And I was like, right, I need to get that. So yeah, Makeup Geek Flame Flamethrower has been a staple in my makeup collection for a very long time. It is more of like a coppery quality and I don't love a copper nowadays, but in terms of coppers that I would like to keep around, Flamethrower is again like Chickadee. It's one of those staple colors that I just wanna keep around until it goes bad. Then we have Urban Decay. I could have featured Naked Heat here, but the Naked Honey is my favorite. In terms of like a warm tone palette, I think Naked Honey every single time because it is that mustard yellow leaning palette that just works best in terms of a warm tone on my complexion. My favorite shade in the palette is the deepest shade in the palette. And it's this weird brown, green, yellowy kind of thing. It's, it looks a bit like an olive almost, um, but this is very sort of mustard yellow heavy. This shouldn't have been called the Naked Honey. They should have named this the Naked Mustard, I feel. Um, but yeah, this is a stunning palette. If I go warm tones, this is probably what you're seeing me wearing nowadays over the warm, spicy orange tones because this just works best. One of my favorite colors to wear in the fall time in terms of clothing is a mustard yellow. I have so much mustard yellow from like jeans and I've got a corduroy jacket that I thrifted and I've got cardigans and t-shirts and if it's a mustard yellow, I have a mustard yellow polka dot dress. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Mustard yellow is one that because my hair is up today, because again, it's like 30 degrees today, I have my fan on, so I'm not overheating as I'm talking to you guys. Um, because I, I have, I had a ceiling fan installed this summer because it was getting a bit out of hand here. Um, but yeah, if my hair is down and I have like a nice brighter red lip or maybe something even with a bit of plum, I feel it contrasts really nicely with the mustard yellow. So because I know I look good in mustard yellow clothing, I also know it works well for me in terms of makeup, but one warm tone palette that like I've taken apart so many of the palettes that I have by this brand, but a warm tone palette by this brand that su works surprisingly well on me. And it is full on glam if I use it. It's not soft glam like the name might suggest. Like if I wear this by ABH, it's a look, it's a look but it's got some really stunning warm tones in. Um, I do appreciate this mauve tone that we get in here. It feels a bit random, but Sultry, the shade that made the Sultry palette into being, because if you look at the outer packaging of the Sultry that we got, it very much matches this shadow, um, but it's a stunning warm tone. It's like this rosy warm brown that I've always really enjoyed. And in terms of like a warm tone shimmer, I've, for years, when warm tones were a thing, I gravitated towards rose golds. That was like my vibe. A yellow tone gold, no, but a rose gold. And this is a rose gold, but with a lot of brown running through it as well. It's got a hint of plum. So is it the warmest shadow in my entire makeup collection? By no means, but on me, this definitely looks warm toned and it still works. And that's one of the reasons why I've always appreciated the soft glam because this does come together for me, whereas so many other um, warm tone palettes just look a little off, can make me look a little sickly, whereas this one has always been an ace in the hole. But in terms of like favorite, favorite, favorite warm tone palettes, the last time I ranked my uh, warm tone palettes, I think this came out on top or at least in the top three. And to till this day, this is my favorite warm tone palette 
It's the Nabla Cutie Analog, which I'm not sure if it's still available, but this is such a stunning little palette. I really, really enjoy this. Why do I enjoy it? It looks very warm, orangey, spicy, but like with the Soft Glam, these deeper shades have a hint of plum, which is why I can get away with it. And also, these orangey tones, when I blend them out on my skin tone, they have a little bit of pink running through them, which is why they work. Um, so it, it's just stunning palette for that reason. It's got two very beautiful shimmers. In terms of a shade that I love, I mean, that peach to gold, that duochrome in the middle is stunning, but the shade I really gravitate towards the minute I open it and what my eye is drawn to first thing is the deepest shimmer that we get here. So it's the shade called Noise, and it is a brown that had a has a reddish undertone, but it's got a cooler spark, like a cooler tone sparkle running through it, and then that hint of plum. It just works every time. More Juvia's Place. In the ninth place, I have for you the Nomad palette, because can we talk about warm tones and not talk about a grungy green color story? I don't think so. I almost put my Mel Gemini in here, but then I looked at it, it was like it's not warm tone enough for it to be really in a warm toned color, like a warm toned overview. Uh, the shade that I love is this, this matte. It's this, I've un it's a very like nondescript looking color. It's brown mixed with yellow and green. And it, it, it looks a little like, when you've been sick, you know? That's what this looks like. But those shades for the grungy look are just the best, are just the best. I know some people find it gross if I, uh, if I describe it like that, but it, 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 it is what it sort of looks like most. It's not the most pleasant looking shade, but in terms of a really good shade for eyeshadow, don't discredit the very murky in-between things because that's where the magic happens. It's the, the, not the pure browns, it's not the pure greens, it's the things where you look at it and like, would I wanna put that on my face? I don't think so, but then you put it on and it's like, oh, so stunning. And the Nomad is still a really good one. Again, no clue if they still do this. And finally, we have the Venus XL, the original. Um, I kept this over my Modern Renaissance. Um, I decluttered Modern Renaissance. I did take the berry shades from the Modern Renaissance out of it because again, mustard yellow is my warm tone spiel, but I also love a berry. And this is just berry heaven. It's, it's all berry. It's got brighter tones, it's got softer tones, it's got cooler tones, it's got warmer tones. And I have to be very honest with you, none of the warm tone berries in here speak to me. It's something like these like brighter pops of color that really make the palette special to me. Um, but for instance, this kind of like murkier shade, it's very similar actually to the one in the um, analog palette, I should say, but it's a little less, it doesn't have the cool tone sparkle running through it and it's a little less brown, but I really, really like these like modern Renaissance kind of mattes down here. Those are two of my favorite shades. This shade here, this really, really dark, it looks black in the viewfinder, but it's this really intense plum, super stunning as liner. Um, so I think the one I wanna swatch for you is Triumph, which is this one right here, cause I think it's like the warmest berry that really, really speaks to me. Uh, this is a little bit, it's like this shade, but cool tone, the one next to it. So, uh, and a little bit deeper, but this has the brightness that I like in a berry. It's got the warmth that I like in a berry. And if you wanna make me very happy, a berry toned eye in the fall time, very smoky eyed season. That that's that represents fall to me. It's what I use my modern Renaissance shades for. It's what I use this palette for. Um, I think I think I decluttered my Rouge Noir uh, cream shadow that I used to have by Chanel. But I used to have the black and red Rouge Noir shadow by Chanel, which I would layer on first, and then putting berries on top, and it was. It's an intense look, but it looks very, very pretty, I have to say. So yeah, maybe this needs to go onto the pile for our October and I need to start using it again because... So yes, that's it. That's the 10 palettes, the 10 warm tone shadows that I wanted to rave about in this video. Even though warm tones, I, I think some people think I don't even like them. I do, I do like a warm tone from time to time. It's just not what I feel my best in. 
So since it's not what I feel my best in, that's why they sort of are second tier in my makeup collection, but they're definitely not forgotten. And I do love myself a warm tone. And if you love warm tones, then I hope this video was a little bit helpful. By no means think that you need to own these palettes or these particular shades. There are so many brands doing eyeshadow nowadays that you can get these kind of color stories a far cheaper or B um, in a completely new formula that we didn't get when, you know, Makeup Geek was still around. So you can definitely find these kind of things. And I think because so many brands do a lot of warm tones, if you want to find dupes, it's not going to be very hard. Uh, I think cool tones are a little harder to find overall. Uh, so yeah, thank you so very much for joining me today. Thumbs up this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more by me. I would love to have you here and join me and I make several videos every single week. So I hope you like to consider subscribing and I hope to see you in my next video. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.